Hello, Duke fans, and welcome to DBR Bites, Episode 7. It is Tuesday, January 31st, 2023. Somehow we are already at the last day of January. I'm Donald Wine. I got Sam Klein with me. Sam, very quickly, tell the people good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And hey, we're coming to you on the day of the Wake Forest game uh, because we actually had some big football news from last night that we wanted to quickly discuss. That's what these Bites episodes are for. Last night, the full 2023 Duke football schedule was released. ACC Network announcing the full schedules for each of the 14 football teams in the conference. And Sam and I wanted to quickly break it down uh, for you. So Sam, for the people out there, let's do it like this. We're going to start, uh, I'm going to tell you the first half of the schedule because I think uh, the schedule kind of breaks into really you know two halves of the season. So let's start by focusing on the first seven weeks. We actually begin with a pretty big game uh, Monday, Labor Day, September 4th against Clemson. We host Clemson to open the season at Wallace Wade Stadium. We then follow up with a Saturday game against Lafayette College in week two. That's an FCS school. Uh, week three, September 16th, we host Northwestern. Then the next week in week four, we travel on the road to take on UConn, which should be an interesting matchup. We then return home a week later on September 30th to face Notre Dame, one of the six ACC schools that the Fighting Irish will face this season. We then get a break after Notre Dame. We get a bye in week six, and then we follow that up in week seven with a home jaunt against NC State on October 14th. So, Sam, the first seven weeks, I, I want to get your comments on it, but there's a couple of things. We we have the one FCS opponent. We only have one true road game in the first seven weeks. Uh, I think we're the only team in the ACC to have that. And of course, you know, I think the big one on the schedule, there's a couple of big games in that first seven weeks, but really you got to start with that Labor Day game against Clemson. Yeah, two games of Duke's opening five are against teams that are college football playoff contenders, right? The, the ACC is not chock full of these teams. Last year, I think North Carolina harbored some like outside dreams of making the CFP, but in the last you know, six, seven, eight years since Florida State kind of fell off. Clemson has really been the only true ACC team with a regular shot at making the playoff. Notre Dame has made the playoff a couple times, and they're always certainly in contention for it. So those two games are going to be very challenging. The most interesting thing to me is that Duke gets Clemson, as you said, Donald, on a Monday, which means it'll have a little bit more attention, you know, that there's sort of less going on 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 Labor Day. So Wallace Wade Stadium will be under the spotlight, so to say. I'm very curious to hear how Mike Elko talks about managing expectations and preparation because, and and the same thing will happen to Duke, by the way, later in the season, we'll get to another quick turnaround that they have. But the, the turnaround from a Monday night game against Clemson to a home game on Saturday, even if it is against FCS school Lafayette, is a is a very fast turnaround, and I imagine that Duke will feel somewhat beaten up after that Clemson game. So I'm already sort of preemptively nervous about that. I do like that Duke doesn't have to go on the road that much, and a trip to Connecticut is not the worst thing. It's it's not that far of a flight for the Blue Devils. It's not like they have to travel to Notre Dame or to Northwestern, which are slightly longer trips. So the the challenge here is that Duke is going to feel like they really need to get out to a fast start and win all of those other games that are not Clemson and Notre Dame if uh, if Duke is looking to make a bowl game again. I am also curious regarding Northwestern as to whether they will uh, be as ineffective as they were in in last year. It was one of the worst seasons recently for Northwestern, so I anticipate a bit of a bounce back, but. Uh, I, I very much hope that Duke is able to get out to the strong start and glad that they have the buy right after that Notre Dame game so that they can sort of rest and recover from from that, you know, hectic schedule against a couple of really top opponents in the first half of the season. I, I Yeah, going back to that Clemson game, I think the the surprising thing was that we are on Labor Day and I, they haven't announced uh, times yet, but you have to anticipate that that game will be a night game. Um, that's usually when they try to do some of these Labor Day, you know, big time matchups. And the fact that Duke is going to be mentioned, like you said, we're going to have the extra spotlight. Cameron, or oh, excuse me, Wallace Wade is going to have the extra spotlight. Uh, that's not something that we're used to. Um, but I also think it's a testament to how highly people are thinking about this coming year's Duke's team, you know, and Mike Elko and just 
how they surprise everyone last year. There's going to be no surprises. Uh, everyone's going to expect us to be uh, pretty decent and give, you know, at least give Clemson a pretty good run for its money. Uh, I think the other thing is we talked about this in the uh, in the prelude to the bowl game uh, that we had in the military bowl, giving, you know, a month prep to Mike Elko. Like he was easily able to figure out what Clemson was able to do, or I'm sorry, what UCF was able to do. I'm interested to see what he gets. You know, now he has seven months uh, to really figure out what Clemson's deal is and how they're going to play and how to counteract that. It's going to be a really interesting game. And like you said, the first half of the season, one true road game, going to UConn, not that far, um, but also just having those two big time games really in one of both of them actually being at home. Um, that should really bode well for Wallace Wade and hopefully people get out there and support this team, not just when Clemson and Notre Dame are in town, but also uh, when we have the Lafayettes and the Northwesterns of the world. I want to shift quickly, uh, Sam, to the second half of the season because it does have really the meat of our road travel. Um, We have two back-to-back weeks where we do travel. It begins on October 21st, week eight. We travel to Florida State. I believe it's the first time in like, nine years or something that we have traveled to Florida state. We then follow that with a road trip to Louisville coming back after Louisville on, on October 28th. We then have another short week, Sam Thursday, November 2nd against wake forest at Wallace Wade stadium. We then have a 10 day break veterans day. That's the big game at UNC. We traveled to Chapel Hill to take on uh, the mighty Tar Heels, who we should have beaten last year, and it was a very, very close game there. Hopefully, it will be uh, a reverse of fortune for UNC this year. Um, finally, we ha- we end with two games at UVA on Oct- I'm sorry, on November 18th, and then November 25th, we close by hosting Pitt. And of course, Week 14 is the ACC championship game that will be on December 2nd. So, Sam. The road, the ACC road schedule was basically reserved for the second half of the season. You, and we have the bye in week six. We then have a home game before we start out on these, you know, couple of road trips that we have. What do you think of the back half of the schedule? And do you think that there's any places where it poses any problems for Duke? It's a fairly unrelenting schedule. I think you're going to hear a lot more about how challenging it is for Duke to manage this because they sort of get the more of those like, front-loaded cupcake games in at home and then that and and the Clemson game is sort of like a wasted home game uh you know being realistic here very unlikely that Duke is beating Clemson in any venue even if it is in Wallace Wade Stadium I imagine there will be plenty of Clemson fans there as there always are when when uh Clemson comes to uh to Durham so that it is going to be challenging uh the fact that Duke gets the the quick turnaround for the wake game is uh is going to be tricky it's not like you know it's not like it adds particularly difficult travel for wake to come to wallace wade so uh that you're going to hear a lot about how the players are like man this is this is tough to be to be preparing for they're playing a louisville team that is you know not top top of the acc but is always competitive right before that so there will be something to uh to the fatigue factor when duke is hosting wake the flip side of that is that they get the extra, you know, two days to recover before the game against UNC, a game that I am sure Duke is going to be highly motivated to win no matter what state the season is in at that point. Of course, Duke lost to UNC this past season uh, in a in a very close affair, one that I think the Blue Devils, if they, if they were to go back and replay, if they wanted to replay all their games, I think that's the one that they would like to get back. So they will be looking forward to that one. I, I'm I'm nervous. Uh, the, the schedule is challenging because there are a lot of road games. Trips to Florida State and Louisville are never easy. So, you know, if Duke is not able, as I said, not able to get those easier wins early in the schedule, this could feel pretty tough down the stretch. Yeah. And with the elimination of the divisions, we're seeing some teams we haven't seen in quite a while, right? Florida State, we haven't seen in a while. Louisville, we haven't seen in a while. Uh, Notre Dame we haven't seen in years and Clemson it feels like has been you know decades that we haven't seen them but it's been a while um, and also you mentioned just the, how re- unrelenting the schedule is nine of our 12 opponents played in a bowl game last year so you know we have a lot of teams that are going to be uh, looking to improve so yeah it, I mean it's a really difficult schedule and there's not going to be a lot of weeks where uh, you feel like you have a reprieve because there's another name coming into town another team coming into town so 
but at the same time, I think I'm looking forward to it. it just out of you know curiosity, if there's one game you're picking, um, what's the one game that you think is the most important game? Uh, I mean, obviously, we have seven, eight months to kind of think about it. But what's the uh, at first glance, what's the first one that you think is the most important game on this schedule? I think that game against NC State right uh, right after the bye is going to tell you a lot about how prepared Duke is for the rest of the season. Yeah, I, I was looking at that one. I think the game at Florida State, because Florida State, while it's, uh, you know, they're a team that's going to be ranked really, really high. I think last time we faced them in Tallahassee, they kind of took us lightly and we almost picked them off um, in Tallahassee. We are 0-10 in Tallahassee. But I think Mike Elko is looking to change that. I think if we go in down there and we win, uh, I think that's a game that everyone's going to be like, oh, snap, this is going to be uh, a pretty good season. I-, I think, Sam, before we go, I want to talk about the uh, the kind of social media that they did in releasing these schedules. I don't know if you saw uh, the videos that Duke men's football put out to kind of release the schedule as it was being released on TV, but some of them were pretty clever. I mean, they all had something to do with the, the opponent um, Florida state with the crab legs uh, running down the hill and touching the rock uh, to, to do Clemson. They had a lot of pretty cool, uh, pretty cool uh, uh, things to kind of highlight what games are going to have and, and release the schedule is a pretty clever way of doing it. Yeah, Donald, I think my, I think my favorite was the, the Dabo run, uh, yeah, uh, in the <laughs> down through the tunnel. <laughs> uh, if you haven't watched a a Clemson home football game, in I, I don't know, I guess in the Dabo Sweeney era, uh, Clemson's got that that big hill that all the players run down, and Dabo has a very very particular gait that is uh, that is sort of funny to watch. So uh, yeah, I, I thought that the I thought that the reveals were fun. I liked uh, that it seems like the program is getting you know more into doing the fun video thing that men's basketball has been so great at for so many years yeah and it, it, again it seems like the players are, are loving some of them too because you can kind of see like how some of them are, are trying hard not to crack up um there's the unc like gender reveal party for a baby and uh they put out the light blue uh unc balloon and one of our players comes in and pops it and gives them a duke blue balloon and just everyone there is just trying really hard not to laugh. Um, but it's I, I like the uh, social media that they're doing um, when it comes to just promoting this team. And hopefully it helps by having Wallace Wade packed for all of these games, especially these big games that they have coming up. Sam, before we get out of here, I did want to quickly note that the Wooden Award, uh, switching to basketball, released its late season top 20 list last night. And Duke is represented by Cal Filipowski. He's one of only two freshmen on this list. Uh, the only other freshman on the list is Brandon Miller of Alabama. Um, this is usually a list that's full of seniors and juniors, and this year's no exception. You have the Oscar Sheebways, Zach Eadies, and, and Chris Murray's, and Drew Timmy's. There's only three other team or players from the ACC that join flip on this list: Armando Baycott, Turquavion Smith, and Isaiah Wong. But uh, I mean, you know, for a guy who was not mentioned as being anything on uh, uh, accolades when it comes to all ACC or even all American, to be in the top 20 on the late season Wooden Award list, I thought is pretty cool. Definitely. And and I, I don't know that Flip is, you know, a favorite to get a first team All American nod or a or certainly a national player of the year nod, but he has, you know, a little over a month now left in the season where he could I, I it, it seems like he has room to to turn it on maybe a little more. So yeah, I think it would be very exciting if, if Flip gets a gets a first or second team all American bid. Hopefully he gets at least a, a couple third team uh, accolades out of this there's a there's a lot of great experienced players in college basketball this year flip does seem like he's you know according to this would be on track for first team all acc which would be an awesome outcome for a guy like you said donald that coming into the season i think we were probably more excited about Derek lively and Derek whitehead than we were for filipowski and certainly he has he's been the most effective you know maybe more because of injuries to everyone else but uh, man he's really shown out so it's uh it, it's a pretty cool honor for him and hopefully it means that there are postseason awards coming as well yeah and if you think about the acc player of the year i mean if you're looking at these other three guys on the list like he faces armando baycott two, you know twice uh left the season he has isaiah wong and turquavion smith you know coming to cameron or at least turquavion smith coming to cameron one more time isaiah wong we will face on the road next monday you will be at that game um in miami so there's a couple of opportunities left for for flip to you know directly outcompete the competition that he has uh, when it comes to all ACC. But I thought this was 
a pretty cool thing to be listed on a national uh, list because, you know, entering the season, Kyle Filipowski was not listed on any list. Uh, so it's a testament to how how hard he's working, how far he's come so far this year. But uh, I want to make that note. That will do it for Episode 7 of DVR Bites. Remember, Duke hosts Wake Forest tonight at 7 p.m. Safe travels to those of you watching in Cameron. But for the rest of us, ESPN is the channel to watch the game. We'll be back tomorrow at some point to give you a recap of that one. So for Sam Klein and Jason Evans, who could not make it this morning, I'm Donald Blind. Duke Band, do your thing and take us home.